Location and occupancy prompts you to consider where the incident is happening and what types of chemicals you might typically find there. For example, think about the number of chemicals you keep in your home, from regular cleaning liquids to pressurized cans of insect sprays. The average home has a large amount of hazardous materials that could cause enormous problems during a response. In rural communities, farms present unique risks due to the storage of pesticides and fertilizers. Additionally, most businesses carry some type of hazardous materials, from simple household cleaners to industrial chemicals such as those used in pools. All of these locations and occupancies provide the potential for the storage of hazardous materials. Understanding that these additional hazards are present allows first responders and other emergency response teams to prepare for them and to take the necessary precautions. There are a lot of different location types to consider. At some locations, such as a nuclear power plant, it will be more apparent that the incident involves hazardous materials. Let's consider some examples common in Utah. One is an agricultural supply store. There are a number of these stores throughout Utah, and they deserve special consideration for a number of reasons. Not only are fertilizers and pesticides already hazardous, certain types of fertilizers may be used in meth labs, as well as for the types of bombs used in terrorist attacks. You can see how a fire at these types of locations could escalate to a more serious incident. Roadways also require special attention and precautions. Highways are the most likely to have a hazardous materials transportation incident. Every vehicle involved in an accident is already carrying a flammable hazard within its gas tank. Add to that numerous semi-trailers transporting many types of hazardous materials, and you never know what you might have to deal with in a traffic accident. While most of the large tanks are well marked, trucks transporting goods for supermarkets might have a mixture of chemicals in amounts small enough to not require any external indicators. The next section will review the placards, labels, and markings you can use to recognize and identify hazardous materials.